Galapagos Islands, a name that has become synonymous with Charles Darwin and his theory of natural selection, and a destination for ecotourists from all over the world. After the three-day sail from mainland Ecuador, we stopped in Puerto Ayora on Santa Cruz Island, the most populated urban center in the Galapagos. We stopped by the boat anchored next to us and had a quick visit with the neighbors. Sea lions are the unofficial welcoming committee of the Galapagos. These sociable creatures are one of the most abundant species in the islands and are always willing to put on a show for tourists. My experience in the Galapagos was not the free roaming adventure that I had hoped for. The reality of these islands is that they are a wildlife sanctuary, so all ecotourism is strictly regulated. If we wanted to go on a hike further than a couple miles from town, we would have had to pay a guide at least $100 to accompany us. Not a great destination for a couple of low-budget cruisers. Despite the regulations, I managed to get up close and personal with a few of the Galapagos' most famed residents, giant tortoises. These painfully slow, prehistoric-looking reptiles are the island's namesake. Galapago means saddle in Spanish. The shells of tortoises here resembled saddles to early explorers, and thus the name Islas de Galapagos was created. These creatures are the largest of their kind in the world due to the lack of natural predators in the Galapagos, and can live up to 150 years. When food and water are scarce, a Galapagos tortoise can survive on the fat inside its shell for up to a year without any nourishment whatsoever. Unfortunately for the tortoises, they provided a perfect food source for early explorers. They are easy to catch, provided ample protein and fat, and will stay alive without food, preventing them from dying and decomposing while at sea. Over a period of 200 years, an estimated 200,000 Galapagos tortoises were killed and consumed. Today, fewer than 200 remain on 13 islands here in the Galapagos. Despite being tightwads, Drew and I decided to go out on a dive boat before we ended our short stay here. We met the guides at 8 in the morning and went on a two-hour motorboat ride to North Seymour Island for some grade A scuba diving and snorkeling. The Galapagos are also known for their stunning variety of underwater sea life. The Humboldt Current, an enormous northwesterly flow of cold, nutrient-rich water, meets with a warmer southwesterly current directly in the Galapagos, creating an environment that attracts everything from microorganisms to hammerhead sharks. The water is packed with plankton, which attracts over 500 species of fish, which attracts everything that eats fish. These white-tipped sharks are more common than floaties in the deep end of the pool. snake-like garden eels protrude from the sea floor, waving their heads like charmed cobras. No dip in Galapagos seawater would be complete without a visit from our friendly neighbors. After our dive trip, we headed back to Puerto Ayora and prepared for the long sail ahead. The Galapagos were the last pieces of land before our 3,000 mile trip to French Polynesia. After topping off our food and fuel supply, we set sail for the Marquesas Islands, beginning our trip across the largest ocean on Earth.